Are you making some seriously fatal mistakes when it comes down to putting on lean muscle? Okay, here's the thing. These aren't big glaring mistakes. These are subtle mistakes that people make left and right and mistakes that I used to make all the time that can be corrected very, very easily to have a huge, huge response when it comes down to allowing you to build more muscle and ultimately improve your metabolism that way too. Hey, you're tuned in to the internet's leading performance, nutrition, and fat loss channel with new videos every single Tuesday, Friday, and Sunday at 7 a.m. Pacific time. Please hit that subscribe button and also hit that little bell icon so you turn on notifications. Please, please, please. It makes it so that you see my videos whenever I post them or whenever I post a live broadcast. All right, so let's talk about the four big muscle building mistakes that aren't quite so known about. Okay, the first one is avoiding cardio. Here's the crazy thing. People seem to think that cardio is going to prevent them from building muscle. It's literally the complete polar opposite, like total 180. Cardio improves your mitochondrial efficiency. It makes your mitochondria more dense. You see, here's what it looks like. Mitochondria is where we produce energy. It's where we produce ATP, whether we're running or lifting. If we have stronger mitochondria and more dense mitochondria, we literally create more power. So we want to improve that and endurance work or cardio improves that. The Journal of Applied Physiology published a study that took a look at participants that went ahead and did eight weeks of endurance work. And they found that when they did eight weeks of endurance work, they had a proportional increase in mitochondrial density and overall power output, meaning that they were able to literally make their cells and muscles stronger in proportion to how they were able to make their mitochondria more dense and just overall more efficient. So cardio literally made their muscles stronger. So by doing a little bit more cardio, you literally can make yourself lift more weight. And this study found that there was a 40% increase. I mean, this is just undeniable, a 40% increase in mitochondrial density, meaning we could potentially have a 40% increase in our ATP production. That is a huge translation into how much you can lift and consequently the overall load on your muscles leading to more muscle growth. Okay, next up is going to be using branch chain amino acids way too much, especially during your workout. Okay, if you've seen my videos before, you know I'm not the biggest fan of branch chain amino acids and I'll briefly tell you why. It's simply because leucine is an amino acid that is involved in muscle building, but it's also very insulin spiking. So whenever you're using branch chain amino acids, you're basically just giving yourself instantized food. Like you basically make it so your body never has the ability to learn how to use its own fuel. So whether you're trying to build muscle or not, this is a good thing. You want your body to be able to learn how to use its own fuel. That way you'll just stay leaner. And who doesn't want to be leaner? Okay. Now, when it comes down to building muscle, it's not anything to do with the insulin factor. Okay. It's because when we're breaking down carbohydrates from our muscles, into our actual bloodstream. What happens is glycolysis is where we take those carbohydrates, we break them down into energy. We break them down into ATP, we break it down into pyruvate. Okay, so pyruvate is very important. When the carbohydrates from our muscles into the bloodstream and they're broken down into pyruvate, that pyruvate gets combined with NADH to create adenosine triphosphate, to create energy. If we don't have pyruvate, we don't have energy, period. We don't have muscle strength. Here's what's crazy. Leucine, which is the amino acid that's in branched chain amino acids, directly inhibits this from occurring. It inhibits, it stops pyruvate from breaking down. Okay, so literally we are hurting our energy production by having BCAAs during a workout. I'm not totally anti-BCAA. I mean, have those amino acids throughout the course of the day later on, but don't sip on them during your workout. You want your body to be able to use its own fuel, but also be able to create the energy from pyruvate. Don't block that. Trust me, you're blunting your energy. Okay, the next thing is not getting enough omega-3s, especially surrounding your workout. Okay, there's a study that was published in Clinical Science that literally found that just four grams of DHA, okay, docosahexaenoic acid, and EPA, eicosapentaenoic acid, which are the main omega-3s, just four grams of those per day, ended up causing a huge increase in fractional protein synthesis, so muscle fraction protein synthesis. So basically what that means is by having the omega-3s available, the muscles were able to absorb more protein. Okay, they found there was a 50% increase in muscle protein synthesis simply by having omega-3s in the body. 
This is insanely high. Okay, literally, we were able to improve how much muscle the body built just by having omega-3s available. And it did this because it upregulated specific genes. Okay, first of all, it helped mTOR, but also upregulated something known as P70S6K. Okay, this is the regulator for flipping the switch between the muscle protein synthesis being on or off. So we upregulated that activity, that protein. So by upregulating that, we literally made ourselves absorb more protein, like 50% more. The other thing is you want to be sure that you're getting your omega-3s from a source that also has a bunch of vitamin A. So for example, like grass-fed beef. Okay, even though grass-fed beef is pretty lean, the small amount of fat in it, which is all you want, the small amount of fat is also high in vitamin A. Okay, that vitamin A is directly involved in protein synthesis. To give you an example, when protein synthesis is elevated in a human being, vitamin A levels decrease. When protein synthesis is down, vitamin A levels increase. And what that tells us is that vitamin A is required for protein synthesis. So if we can keep vitamin A coming in the body while we are going through protein synthesis, we could potentially draw protein synthesis out a little bit longer. So how do you do that? Well, eating like grass-fed, grass-finished beef or grass-finished meat of some kind shortly after your workout, but not right after your workout, which I'll talk about in a minute. So maybe an hour after your workout. That's the greatest way to keep it lean. If you're looking, by the way, for grass-fed, grass-finished beef, big fan of ButcherBox. There's a link down in the description below that'll get you a special discount on it. So ButcherBox is all grass-fed, grass-finished meat. So it's gonna be leaner, so it's not gonna have a bunch of fat that's gonna end up depositing after a workout, but the amount of fat that it does have is just enough, and it's omega-3 and vitamin A rich. So literally, you can get grass-fed, grass-finished beef delivered right to your doorstep without ever having to go to the grocery store. And the cool thing is, it's literally cheaper than the grocery store, and that's why I'm a big fan of them. So I wanna make sure you check them out down in the description. Whether you're trying to build muscle or not, it's a good way to feed yourself and feed your family. All right, so this next one is actually a two-part one, okay? It's gonna be eating big meals right after your workout, but also listening to the whole anabolic window myth that you need to eat within 30 minutes after your workout. Okay, here's the thing. When we eat big meals after a workout, we don't absorb nearly as much as if we just ate a smaller meal. The reality is a lot of times we're combining these fats and carbs. I know so many people that'll say, oh, I finished a workout, I'm gonna go down the street, I'm gonna get a cheeseburger, just because I can, I can have these calories now, so why the heck not, right? Well, the reality is it's the worst time to be loading up on a bunch of calories. You're sensitive at this point in time. So don't misconstrue it. People think, oh, I'm sensitive, I'm gonna absorb more protein. Well, you're sensitive, you're gonna absorb everything. So if you have a bunch of fat, you're gonna absorb that fat. If you a bunch of carbs, you're gonna absorb those carbs. You're also gonna absorb the protein, but you're gonna absorb the fat along with it. And that's gonna slow everything down. It's also gonna make it so while you're building muscle, you're gaining fat. That just defeats the purpose, because at some point you're gonna to wanna to shed it off, right? So don't eat a big meal, but more importantly, don't combine fats and carbs. Now, there's another part to this. The Canadian Journal of Applied Physiology published a study that found that the whole anabolic window thing was a myth. See, protein synthesis is not that elevated right after a workout. Protein synthesis slowly elevates more and more throughout the course of the day. At four hours post-workout, protein synthesis was elevated 50%. At 24 hours post-workout, protein synthesis was elevated 109%. So you are at a higher level of protein synthesis 24 hours after your workout than you are right after your workout. Now, I'm not saying that you need to wait 24 hours. The point is you don't need to be bringing your Tupperware to the gym with you and try to just shove it down your throat right after a workout. You've got a little bit of time. Go home, cook a good quality meal with some grass-fed, grass-finished beef, and add the nutrients that you really want because you don't need to be getting it with a shake. You don't need it right then. You should eat when you need to eat and not force it because then you're gonna absorb more, but you're also gonna get the other profiles that you need to make everything work for you. So hopefully these tips will help you build lots more muscle this year, and they're also gonna make it so you stay lean in the process. If you have ideas for future videos surrounding this topic, just put them down in the comment section below, and I'll see you in the next video.